Hi guys, welcome back. In this video, we shall be talking about chemical injuries to your eye. It is a very dangerous thing to happen. You first of all, you never ever want to have a chemical injuries to your eyes. But let's say everything is bad and you had a chemical injuries to your eye. What are you supposed to do? And what are they going to do in the hospital? This will be a video about that. So chemical injuries is considered as an ocular emergency. This means it is an emergency condition. Now chemical injuries are divided into two types. It is divided into uh, alkali and acid. So alkali and acid. Now out of these two, which is more dangerous, acid or alkali? It sounds like acid is more dangerous because it seems it is more aggressive. It can do more damage. But the answer is alkali is more dangerous. I'll give you an example. Imagine I got a splash with the acid into my eye. The area that came into the contact with the acid, that area is damaged. That's all is going to happen. Where else? If I get uh, your alkali splash onto my eyes, the area that came into my alkali surface area, that is going to be damaged. Along with this, the structures behind it or the deeper structure, this alkali can penetrate. This is the problem of alkali. Alkali can penetrate your deeper uh, structures of your eye, whereas acid will not go because the area that gets corroded by an acid that will act as a physical barrier. But in alkali, even if the area has been damaged, alkali can penetrate deep inside your eye. Just to give you an example, if you have an alkali splash to your eyes, in just around 15 seconds, I repeat 15 seconds, this alkali can reach your anterior chamber in around 15 seconds. So that is the biggest problem. So alkali is more dangerous. Obviously acid is also dangerous and alkali is also more dangerous. But comparing these two, which is more dangerous is your alkali. So what alkali we are talking about is ammonia or calcium hydroxide. That is your uh, lime. That is your lime. Uh, that is what you use to whitewash your uh, the wall before you apply your paint or you can see this in construction areas alkali and uh, that is your light that is the most dangerous thing that can happen if it falls to your eyes so remember whenever you have this all chemical injuries are not going to cause you blindness or not going to cause it 100% detrimental effect yes chances are there a lot of chances are there that you can go blind the treatment will not be effective it all depends on some of the factors now what are these factors? The first factor is that did you get an injury by an acid or an alkali? If you got by an alkali, the outcome is bad. Second thing, how much area of your eye was affected? Was it 5%, 10%, 15%? You can grade the eye. It was 15% of the eye or 50% of the eye was damaged. More surface area means more damage. Third thing is that which area of your eye? Now if you see my eye very clearly or just you can see your own eye in front of the mirror. You will see a black part and a white part. So where the white and the black part meets, that is known as limbus. If that area you get an injury, it is very bad. The prognosis is very, very bad. The fourth thing is that how much time, how much time your eye was exposed to that chemical before you start to uh, clean your eyes, before you start to irrigate your eyes. More amount of exposure for a longer time will be more damage. And the amount of exposure, did you expose to about 2 ml of acid? Or just I'm just giving an example 2 grams of some uh, lime powder how much for how long did you expose how long and how much more quantity more quantity of the substance more damage more for prolonged time more damage the dangerous area of the eye that is the limbus then more bad more amount of the eye is damaged that is also very bad along with this was it an alkali or an acid if it is an alkali it is more bad so these are the factors that are going to say Okay, your eyes, uh, what will be the condition of your eye? How will the treatment come out? So, now let us try to see what is the first step that you can do at your home if you get an acid splash. See, first thing first, you never ever want to get an acid splash in the first place. The first thing, that is the, remember, that is the reason you have to remember, you have to use this kind of glasses. This is known as uh, safety goggles. You have to wear it. These are not just for, um, not just there for fun. These are actually going to help you. You have to, have to, have to use this. Now, let's say you got injury by an acid. Now, what is the first thing that you're supposed to do? You have to stop everything. You have to stop everything that you're doing. 
and you have to run to your kitchen or run to your sink and you have to splash water to your eyes you have to splash water to your eyes for a minimum of half an hour minimum half an hour you have to splash water to your eyes for minimum half an hour and keep on continuously splashing water and do not rub your eyes you are never supposed to rub your eyes please do not do it if you do it you are going to exaggerate the, the injury more you are never supposed to rub your eyes not just for chemical injury for any other foreign body it falls into your eyes you are not supposed to rub your eyes this is very very important now once this thing is done next thing you have to rush to your hospital now let's say you are staying around 20 minutes from your hospital should you run down to your kitchen or should you run down to your hospital i'll say you should run down to your kitchen and put water because there will be so much pain you cannot drive your car first thing and even if you sit back on your car someone else is driving the time that is going to take your take you to reach the hospital that is from your injury side to you, that time is also going to cause a very big problem to your eye because entire that course of that time duration your eye is exposed to that chemical so best thing will be that if you can sit in a car and still irrigating your eyes that will be the best thing but it is not very possible all the time so best thing is that you go and irrigate your eyes in the home for at least half an hour continuously irrigating your eyes and do not rub your eyes and after that you go to the hospital as fast as possible now once you reach the hospital now this is as i told you this is an ocular emergency they are going to divide your treatment into two segments first is emergency treatment and second is long term treatment now what will be done in the emergency treatment again they are going to irrigate your eyes now they can use um, like mostly they use normal water and sometimes they can use normal saline as well and during this uh, irrigation they might also add some antibiotics and they can even leave your eyes for irrigation for maybe two three four five hours also for prolonged time also now once they irrigate now they'll check the ph of your eye remember the tear that you're having inside your eye whenever you cry the tear comes out the tear is ph is 7 so if you had an acid splash to your eyes your ph will drop maybe 6 maybe 5 maybe 4 or if you had an alkali your ph will be increased maybe 8 maybe 9 maybe 10 so we are aiming your ph to come down to the normal level that is 7 that is the main goal of irrigation and remember whenever we are irrigating it we are not neutralizing the acid we are never aiming to neutralize the acid because if you neutralize an acid uh, heat is going to be produced and heat is going to do more damage to your eyes we are diluting the acid we are diluting the acid that is the entire goal diluting and making the pH come back to the normal now once this thing is done now they are going to do double eversion of your eyelid they are going to evert your eyelid somewhat like this they are going to evert your eyelid and down and try to take out all the foreign bodies because even if this small part of your particle of lime or particle of acid they try to have to remove it along with this they will be using glass rod now this glass rod are actually like a broom they will actually sweep your entire eye to take out all the remaining particles that are not visible by naked eye after this they are going to remove the area that has been damaged that means all the necrosis tissue the tissue that has been damaged they are going to remove it this is this is the end of emergency treatment now in long term treatment now they will give you antibiotics they will give you antibiotics mostly this is moxifloxacin group of anti moxifloxacin they will give you now along with this they will give you topical uh, steroids now steroids are given in order to reduce the inflammation and the steroids will not be given more than 14 days because till around 10 days after 10 days 10 to 14 days they are start, uh, slowly start, uh, going to taper the dose and after if you are continuing, continuing after 14 days the side effect of steroids are more than the benefits so steroids are used only for 2 weeks with antibiotics with anti-glaucoma drugs because you can develop glaucoma and cycloplegic drugs because you will be having ciliary spasm and this will cause this tremendous amount of pain so they will be giving you hematropine or atropine along with this they will give you doxycycline now doxycycline has shown to prevent the cornea to get melted because even if you have a chemical injury your cornea can get melt and if the cornea gets melted it's a huge problem so if you give doxycycline this cornea melting will be stopped along with this they will again give you topical solutions of vitamin c maybe around 10 percent because vitamin c will be given topically and also by oral route in order to increase the healing time 
Along with this, they are going to give you tier supplementation. These are the things that they are going to do in your hospital. So please remember, first thing first, you have to wear your safety goggles. If everything goes wrong, nothing is in your hand, then you have to do an eye cleaning that is in your kitchen or in your washroom. You have to educate your eyes properly, not just one, two drops. You have to literally take, you have to literally take a molecular. In this manner, you literally have to do it. Let your old uh, clothes get wet. You have to do it. And at least for half an hour and you have to irrigate your eyes continuously and then you have to rush to the hospital once you rush to the hospital they are going to evaluate how much injury they are there is a classification it says that okay 20 percent has been damaged or how much percent is, is damaged is grade one grade two grade three grade four these are the classification it's been done okay more some are good prognosis bad prognosis worse prognosis that it's, it's in the classification now once they will do it now they will do the treatment Treatment, as I told you, will be divided into two parts. It will be emergency or long-term treatment. First, they'll again irrigate. will make sure your pH comes to the normal level. Irrigate and remove the foreign bodies. Now, long-term treatment, what they're going to give you, they're going to give you steroids, antibiotics, uh, cyclophilic drug, along with vitamin C, then doxycycline, uh, long uh, steroids, I already told you, antibiotics, uh, anti-glaucoma drugs and tear supplementation they are going to add in order to preserve your eyes these are the things that will be done from your uh, ophthalmology department so only thing that you have to remember if by chance you got a chemical injury to your eye irrigate your eye properly properly and for a half an hour with water continuous irrigation and do not rub your eye after that immediately rush to the hospital Please do not do whatever the things that I have told you. This will be done by your doctor. I'm just giving you an uh, um, basic idea. These things will be done by your doctor. What will be the dose? For how long? These things will be done by your doctor. The best thing that you can do at your home is to irrigate your eyes and rush to the hospital. That is the thing that you have to do. Remember, chemical injuries to eye is not a joke. Once you lose one of your eyes, the entire depth perception will be affected and then you'll understand what is the um, uh, worth, what is the price of losing one eye. So please, 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 these are not expensive. You have to wear it. You have to wear it. That's all for now. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.